Welcome to the third day of Christmas. Yesterday's contest winner is down below. You always find them there from the previous day. All right, 24 hours, we chuck them on up, and the next winner is there. Today, we have some store credit that we're going to be giving away from Troll and Toad. All right, and this is super easy, guys. All that I ask is you make sure you guys comment down below. Make sure you guys are entered. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. I would like to get to 85,000 before the end of the year. And I, I think, I think we can do that. All right. I believe in each and every one of us. Um, we do have a lot of spicy stuff coming on up here for the 12 days of Christmas, including many interesting deck profiles. Probably things that a lot of you guys haven't seen yet as well. And this series will be going each and every day. So comment down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed so that we can get to that 85,000 goal. And there's going to be some gem deck boxes along the way here as well for some of these contests. So let's dig on into the spicy deck profile of the day, shall we? You know, Mystic Piper has not quite looked this good in a very long time welcome to that third day of chris or deck profiles all right we have to be very politically correct these days it would seem all right so what are we doing with this deck our friend mystic piper says you contribute this card to draw or to draw and reveal one card if this card is a level one monster draw one more card. The effect of Mystic Piper can only be activated once per turn. Now, what is our game plan for this bad boy here? We're going to be using this as a draw engine to effectively get to more hand traps, um, basically progress our game plan through chaos monsters. Now, this was sent to me by my friend Jimmy Avini, and before you're like, Robbie, Robbie, ah, where's the one for one? Uh, me and Akuna were thinking about that earlier, and we were like, quite honestly, one for one might not be, it would be good in the deck, but when you look at some of the ratios, I'd rather just have some of the hand traps in my hand in order to kind of generate some advantage. So that, you can play it if you want, I already know the deck's borderlining the 50 card mark as it is right now. It's kind of up to you. So we have the one copy of the Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning main boss monster. You drop this bad boy on your opponent, start winning the game, all right? And then we have triple copies of DD Crow. Now, you guys know why we play this, right? I'll give you a hint. Level one monster. We have the one dark arm dragon. You should have no problem whatsoever setting up the effective amount of dark monsters for your resource pile. Should not be an issue whatsoever. Now, the cool thing with this deck is we actually can play the Dogmatica package, which means we're going to be able to capitalize and have a more consi or consistent game plan all the way around. So we have the triple copies of Dogmatica Ecclesia the Virtuous, which will search for the punishment so that we can fire off on the opponent's turn, and we'll get access to the Fleur de Lis for the additional extender options. All right? Now, ah, more level ones. We have two copies of Droll and Lockbird, probably one of the better hand traps in today's modern format. Two copies of Effect Veiler, also a level one that will be able to discard and negate an effect monster's effect. And did you guys forget about Gnome Material being a level one monster? I kind of did, actually. This is, uh, this kind of caught me off guard. I was like, wait a minute. Really? Nomi? Yep, Nomi's a level one. Don't forget about this. And then we have triple copies of the King of Boyo. So remember, this thing can't be special summoned. When this card is normal summoned to foot face up, we can target that level one monster in our graveyard and special summon that monster. But banish it when it leaves the field. The old play was you would immediately overlay with it, and then it would put it back into the graveyard. This also lets you reuse Mystic Piper through the next turn as well. Now, because we are a spicy little meatball. We are maxing out on triple copies of the Magician's Soul. Now you're probably like, huh, now wait a minute, Robbie. We only have 20 spells and traps in the deck. Level one extender. Uh, it's such a weird thing to say that. The fact that this is actually an extender in the deck is uh, actually really cool. Also, it lets you turn in some of your dead cards for more consistency enablers. And then, of course, you, you have to play Piper, right? Like, the entire concept of the deck is Mystic Piper Draw, 
all right? Like, if you don't resolve these Mystic Piper draws, then what are you going to do, all right? You're, you're just not going to have a good time. So, yes, Piper's still going to be that essential little asset for your deck. Triple copies of Gamma, one driver. Hand traps, all right? I'm sorry to tell you guys that Gamma is, in fact, not a level one monster. I know. It's a... <laughs> I, I know. I I really wish that uh, this was a level one, but can't win them all. And then we also have one copy of the Chaos Creator, another extender for our strategy, aka we need boss monsters that we can drop on the field, punish the opponent, and capitalize on these things, all right? Super easy stuff. Now, spicy stuff here. Chaos Space. So you send a lighter dark monster from your hand to the graveyard. Add a lighter dark monster that cannot be normal summoned or set from your deck. Huh. Well, means we can get to the, this is the fun guy. We also have access to the Chaos Creator off of this. Does that mean that we can just search for our boss monsters? Yeah, it does. This is so cute. We have one Feather Duster. Um, kind of seeing how the format will develop here. Um, you might want to play this. You might not want to play this in the main deck. Either way, it's up to you. All right. Jack in the Hand. This is a new card that we got a little while ago. So we can reveal three level one monsters with different names from the deck. Your opponent adds one to your hand. All right. So your, your opponent adds one to their hand. You add one to your hand. The third will go into the deck. So, either way, you can give your opponent a hand trap. You can take something. You can give your opponent the Piper if you want. All right, like ah, something that you don't necessarily want. But we now have a tutoring for level one monsters, which is actually really cute in the long run. Uh, this card's actually incredibly powerful. Triple copies of Nadir Servant, the same thing. If you guys haven't noticed, the Dogmonica package has kind of been this hard carry for a lot of rogue decks right now. And I think we're going to continue to probably see that. Now, the Spice. Rank up Magic Astral Force. Target one Exceed monster you control with the highest rank. Your choice if tied. Smash them from your extra deck. One monster with the same type and attribute as that monster you control, but two ranks higher by using it as material. Hmm. So we can generically level up into some relatively cute little things here. Now, two ranks higher than it. So you have stupid things like Utopia Roots, Utopic Dragon. Now here, so we can exceed some of this card by using a, or by discarding a rank up spell card and using a Utopia we control as material. So we can actually make this off of our Utopia Roots, all right? Uh, cute little shenanigans like that. We have triple copies of where Arf Thou. Everything is level one. We have triple copies of Crackdown. This could be Imperm if you really want. Uh, we are playing a slower strategy, so having something that can take an opponent's monster might not be the most hurtful thing in the world. And then we have triple copies of Punishment. You can mess around with this if you want, play two or something. It's up to your ratios, all right? Extra deck here. We have one Lambda. Hey, extenders. One Link Karibo. One copy of the Utopic Dragon. So, you can also see some of this card by discarding a rank up magic card and using a Utopia monster we control as exceed material. Once per turn, we can target one number monster in our graveyard. Splash them in a defense position, but its effects are negated. During either player's turn, when a monster effect is activated that targets this face of card, we can detach and exceed material from this card to negate that activation if you destroy it. We also can use this card to make Zeus uh, options. So when any monster declares an attack, detach one material from this card. All right, negate that attack. And if you do, negate it, exceed monsters attack. This card gains 500 attack times that monster's ring. So this thing gets fat, all right? So all we care about is being able to turbo out Zeus. One Recital Starling to search for DD Crow. One Assembled Nightingale. One Levier. One Zeus Machine with the one adding Nestor Wind Pegasus. One Omega. Two copies of Titan Clad. Two Anintes and one Cyber End. Side decks kind of put together. Adjust as you please for this. We have Triple Ancia, Triple Ash, Triple Chaos Hunter, Triple Skullmeister, and Triple Copies of Evenly Matched. Wrapping up your third day.
me, I can't even count. <laughs> See, there are only two fingers up there. The third day of Christmas and deck profiles and all that other fun fancy stuff. So what do you guys think about this list? It's fun stuff, all right? It's not always going to be competitive. Please, leave a comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces later on in the day or tomorrow, whatever the schedule may be. Have a good rest of your day, guys. Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end without you guys' support. Well, I would probably be doing Drupal Shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out Vancall 40 for all of your Cardfight Vanguard content brought to you by Mcall 40 And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out mcallgames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.